Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn the basics of making a Python maze game to kind of get started with that Python journey, stay tuned, I'm covering the basics in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Okay, so jumping straight in, I used ChatGPT and I'm gonna walk through the chat on the left momentarily and show you the stages of this and kind of how you can work to develop this game. I don't think that ChatGPT is gonna be able to make a full-fledged game that you like, but it is an easy way to get a template to get started. So for example, we will show a very basic version of this game which allows the user to select an image. In this case, I'll use the Codeless Fix logo. And you can then use this to navigate around. You'll see this little black bar here. You can't go through it. So you can just copy the code for this and make more throughout and make different levels. But the idea is when we get to the end, congratulations, you've reached the finish line. So that's really all that there is to the game, but there were a couple of stages as I was building this. Now I am gonna host this online. So when you go to codelessfix.com, there's a coded apps section, and you can actually find a source code library where this will be listed. And again, the point here is the game itself is not very impressive, but you can change so many different things here. So for example, game variables, you see we have the finish line, we have the wall width, we have the game loop, get keys currently being pressed, update position. So you have tons of things that you could change if you wanted to increase the difficulty. So for example, we have quite a few different options. You could adjust the speed to make them move very, very quickly, maybe not so quickly, whatever it is that you need. So as we're scrolling through, just to go over a couple of examples, and then we'll go through actually building this, you'll see <clears throat> this is based on the arrow keys. So you'll see player X, you'll see five, for example. If we were to change this to 25, and we run this game now, we'll repeat the process, and we'll see which one is 25. It's pretty obvious, so we're going right, up, down, left. So you'll see it, it's pretty obvious which one's which. So if we decided we wanted to do so, we could change all of these to 25 to make it much more difficult. And this is just one of many ways. Obviously, you also have the ability to set up and add additional walls. But <clears throat> we'll test this out. So you'll see when we select in, the player now moves incredibly fast. Unfortunately, they can now go through this piece, which obviously we don't want but they can navigate much more quickly and it doesn't look like it's now registering this portion right here. So we'll see if we change that back, what ends up happening. So we'll choose one more. And again, this is just showing you the basics so that you can learn, okay, how exactly do we get this working? So everything works when we have it set to five. So you can kind of figure that out on your own. And then you'll see the collision occurred so we have some information here. So let's go through how we actually made this. So we'll start with a brand new game.py file. And I started out by saying, write me code for a Python game. It needs to start with a file explorer dialog to allow users to select an image to be used for the player. This needs to be resized. The main reason for this is people could import high resolution images that are bigger than the actual screen we're working with. Then you'll see I got a sample of the code here. So we'll paste it in and see what I got. In this case, I have the image, but I'm pressing the arrow keys and nothing's happening. So I said, this does not allow the player to move. And I got an apology for the oversight. Here's the updated version of the code. So we are getting the code to be a little bit longer now, which means we may end up having to ask chat GPT to finish. But we'll click play and we'll select the image and you'll see now we have a moving image. We just don't have a finish line. So we'll close this, see what comes up next. So now I said revise this to add in, revise this to add in walls to create a tunnel. User needs to start playing at the top left and finish needs to be at the bottom right. So we'll copy the code that comes up next and we will paste it in here and click play. 
And you'll see this time around, we have a functional code or game. But when we get over here to the finish, it just ends. So now we need to see a pop up that says winner when the player finishes. I'll paste in this code and I see that there are two stray marks here. So I'll remove that. And now we will go with the final revised code. So we now have the player moving around. He still can't move into this wall right here. And we get the finish line. Now, one thing I want to note about this is <clears throat> as you're scrolling through to make this more interesting, you can scroll through the code even if you don't know programming. For example, set up screen dimensions. It's 640 by 480. If you wanted to, you could make this a thousand by, let's just say, a thousand. And then when you go to run it, you'll see the screen is much larger. So there are plenty of things that you can do to essentially work with this and, you know, make it whatever it is that you want it to be. So we'll change this back to 640 by 480. And then we'll scroll through and see what else we could do. So when we're going through this, there are certain things that you may need to bear in mind that could be dependent on others. So you'll see we have set up game variables. We have finish line, the wall width, wall height, and you'll see wall X wall Y. So it's the screen width and the screen height. Um, so as you're scrolling through, you'll see display game elements on the screen. So we have this rectangle. You'll see wall X, wall Y, wall width, wall height. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here just because it is a little bit more complex when you're wanting to add in certain things like the walls in this case. And I'm going to show why really, really quickly. So when we're adding in a wall, unfortunately, based on where the wall is defined, it's not always as simple. So in this case, when we go through and we're reviewing all of this code, you'll see we have wall X1 and wall Y1. Then, because I've added in a new wall, which I asked ChatGPT to do, and I'll show you in a second, we have wall X2 and Y2. Now, in this case, when we scroll down, it's not as simple as just pasting in this code with Y3 and X3. As you scroll down, you'll see we have to check for the collision with the wall because that stops the player. So not only do we have to define the wall, we have to say, where is the wall? And where or what happens when you collide with the wall. So you'll see we have wall X1 and then wall X2. And then as we continue to scroll down, we also have wall X1 and wall X2. So depending on the type of game and the level of complexity, what you need to do will change, but you do need to define these in quite a few different areas. So we can try to do that together, but when you're starting out, what I did, just as an example, is I asked it for code with basically adding in another wall. So I said, you know, I want to add in more walls, make it more complex, and it gave this. And it shows, okay, here's X1, X2, and then X1 and X2. But the problem is it doesn't define the three areas that you need it. So we need it up here, as previously discussed. We also need the collision, which it skipped over here. So that's going to be a bit of an issue. And another thing is, if you're naming the wall, which was previously wall X, if you're renaming it to X1, you need to make sure wherever it's referenced elsewhere is also being renamed. So let's try to do this together really quickly. We'll expand this and click run just to see what the walls look like and confirm. Okay, so we have this one. When I collide with it, I can't continue moving and then I can continue through. So let's try to change this up a bit. So what we're going to do is we know that we have three areas to make this change. So first and foremost, we have wall X1 and Y1. So let's add in one more wall. And we're going to add it in right here and we'll call it X3 and Y3. And then we'll <clears throat> just kind of follow the pattern and see what happens. So we'll divide 
by six here just to just to see or actually let's just go with divide by five to see what happens so this is the y coordinate for the new wall and then this is the x coordinate so let's go with in this case you'll see the x coordinates consistently been zero so actually we'll just leave it and just kind of see where this ends up placing it but you see for x1 it's screen width divided by two screen height divided by two minus the width so we'll leave it like this just to see what happens and then we will scroll through and check for the collision with wall and you'll see we need to add this exact same if condition because we are adding it for the player colliding with basically the next wall now you do need to be careful with your indentation so make sure that it's lining up and matching and then you'll see player x wall x3 player x wall x and you just need to make sure that the references to x2 and y2 are changed to x3 and y3 and then you'll see that we have player x player x player x so now we will scroll down and this should be the last bit that we need to add and this is why you typically want to keep these commented parts it is very very helpful to see okay this is wall three and then we're going through and we just need to make sure that it's properly defined here so wall x3 y3 wall height so now let's test this real quick so we will open up this dialog we'll click play and you'll see that if I'm not mistaken, this wall basically just got bigger. So let's try to mess with these coordinates just a bit and see what we end up getting. So we'll scroll through and you'll see that we have our screen width and height defined here. And we have, you know, basically all of our code. So we're going to look for the coordinate for the new wall. And we're going to say, you know what, the X coordinates too close to the last one. So you have some options. Uh, let's just say let's just make it two and see what happens so we'll run it double click the picture and you'll see it's moved over what I assume to be two pixels so let's try doing this so we could set it to let's try 500 and then screen height we have it set to divide by five instead let's make this 500 and when we double click here, you'll see that, honestly, it looks like it may have actually gone off the screen. And I think that's because our screen isn't even that big on the Y axis. So in this case, you would need to double check your screen size, which max height is 480. So in this case, we would probably need to choose something like 100 just to be safe. And now we have a block over here. And when we go over, you'll see when we bump into it, we still can't move past it. Now, this can be a little bit painful as far as just like throwing random blocks throughout the screen. But once you begin to get an idea for it, you could even start to try to adjust the blocks. So instead of putting 10 up top to make a giant line, you could just resize one to make it a certain size. So the idea here is you have your finish line defined you could always work through changing out the sizes so your image for example is 50 by 50 you can adjust that you have player x player y all of these different values and variables so as you're going through you can determine okay what should the wall size be where do i need to stretch it where do i need to place it but at the very least we have a functional game that works right now that you can kind of modify so this is the exact code that i will be posting on codeless fix in the coded app section. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.